Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast and uh, get ready to get out your tissues and <laughs> and, uh, and uh, take a nice walk by the beach because we're talking about Nicholas Sparks movies today. It's going to be super fun. We're ranking uh, like there's 11, 11 Nicholas Sparks based movies. And uh, I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Terry's here. Hey, you ready let's for get this? off. Yeah, let's get prepared for some death. Yes. <laughs> Cancer is not our friend. <laughs> <In this. laughs> I gotta uh, say, though, I miss Nicholas Sparks movies, despite everybody having cancer and dying of yeah. something or the other. It's been a long while since we had one. Yeah. So the last one that we got, when was that? Uh, the um, let's see uh, the release date. Let me see. The I last was- one we got was the choice choice. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. What a way, what a way to yeah. end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, uh, oh, wow. It has been that long. Wow. Yeah. So we thought about doing this ranking because, uh, of course, the Broadway musical of The Notebook has just opened of The Notebook. And, uh, and it's, uh, interesting. Uh, I, I actually have a friend, Adrian, who saw it. She said it, she really enjoyed it. I, I'm I'm intrigued about it as a theater critic and movie critic uh, because uh, I you know I enjoy the film, but also the songs are written by Ingrid Michaelson, who I really love. Uh, she's an indie folk uh, songwriter singer uh, that I've actually seen in concert. I really enjoy her, she, and I I uh, I it's just, it's just interesting to see the the success of these uh these singers you know going to, over to broadway you know yeah. sarah Bareilles and in a uh, waitress and uh, and this and i know there's many others uh but i don't know are, are you intrigued by this uh this musical i am intrigued that they turned the notebook into a musical i would think if anything it would just be like a standard play like you know mm, like yeah. in my mind i could see it as the medabbing it's just a you know a play but to yeah. turn it into a musical is interesting because i'm like what are the song choices going to be? Like, are you going to be yeah. singing like, <laughs> what are you singing about when you meet back up again? You know, like yeah. what exactly it could end up being like amazing. Yeah. Eventually and, we'll get another film version of it. <laughs> well, and it's interesting because I, 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 I was curious to see how this was going to do, if it would do well on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the critics reviews have been mixed about it, but I, uh, because I feel like the notebook is the kind of movie that was extremely successful, but does it really have like a hive around it? You know what I mean? Like, uh, does, do are people, is it like tons of people's like favorite movie and they collect like, for instance, with back to the future, obviously that has like a huge hive around it makes sense to turn that into a musical. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, or obviously Disney, anything Disney makes sense. Like, but but I I don't know I was just like is that's a is good there point. enough I mean, of a following you know around but the people movie? do love that movie I think yeah maybe romance fans like yeah like d- dramatic romance like a true romance that has all yeah. the drama the melodrama in it I I think it would rank high among romance like films that they did a I guess I don't know if maybe if they did yeah. a modern ranking or something I think it ranks high I I don't know I mean. I just realized that the movie's 20 years old now, The Notebook. Yeah, that's crazy. It's been like a long time. <laughs> um, it's well, we'll like, talk wow. more about I that. Know. But but I mean... In, but in, yeah, in, it is in true. Also, that's a good point you made. Like, I don't know how people feel about it yeah. today. Well, and, and it is true also that not every movie... I mean, it is true that not every... A musical based on a movie needs to be all that popular of a movie like for example like the band's visit is a very kind of obscure uh indie you know kind of film uh foreign film uh but that you know did pretty well on broadway and won tonys and you know whatever um so it it uh, it's not necessarily uh one in the same but but it'll be interesting to see you know how it does so i guess what you know we'll see uh it's 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 a very uh tough time on broadway these days you have to uh you have to get so lucky 
And there's so many other factors that come into play uh, that, uh, man, those people who invest in Broadway shows, those people have guts because it is so hard to make a a go of it uh, these days. Uh, Anyway. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Let's talk. We have 11 movies. And would you say you're overall a fan of the uh, Sparksian uh, uh, method, Sparksian genre of films? I would say yes, but it's a difficult being a fan. <laughs> I think, speaking of The Notebook, I think that's probably the most recognizable and remembered Nicholas Sparks yeah. movie. I think that Definitely. if anybody had to pick out of a hat uh, a Nicholas Sparks movie, they would automatically say The Notebook, yes. regardless of how someone feels about it or not. Um, but it's like, a, it's truly a mixed bag. And I kind of miss this type i kind of miss this type of movie this type of romance Mm -hmm. um which i think is more they're doing more on television now these type of like romance sort of stories or books or whatever because we you know we haven't really gotten a good good romance movie out or it's going straight to streaming you know like yeah i mean a lot of stuff a lot of people think of think of Hallmark and, and Nicholas Sparks as being kind of the same, but they're really mm-hmm. not. Like No, Hallmark, because Hallmark ain't almost, a lot of people dying in Hallmark. No, and Hallmark almost never goes the, the melodramatic route. Very rarely. Very, very rarely. rarely. Very rarely. Very rarely. Very I mean, rarely. you'll have something like that, um, uh, that Christmas bedtime stories or something like that that kind of That's feels... the closest, I would yeah. say, the closest with the twist. Because not mm-hmm. all Nicholas Sparks movies have a twist, but... Yeah. um. He, the he melodrama is it. similar. Yeah. Melodrama, yeah. yeah. I yeah. do miss that melodrama. When I was younger, I thrived for melodrama and depressing stuff. But as you get older, you're like, I can't anymore. Yeah. I've got to move on. <laughs> I'm too sad. Yeah. <laughs> I can't um, remember which movie it was that I watched. And I was like, I want to put my head in the oven. And I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I need light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I don't mind uh, the Nicholas Sparks formula. You know, you're just kind of like five, four, three, two, one. Oh, cancer. Here we go. You know, you're just kind of, you know, what's coming and you know what beats are going to be, but buttons he's going to try to press right. on you. I've actually never read any of his novels. Have you ever read I any of I read one. I read the notebook mm, oh, a okay. long time ago. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah. I, I don't know how like different the books are from the from the movies but i don't either but i do think for the films because he has so many books the films yeah. definitely stay within a model yeah for sure of his storytell so i am not even sure if he if all his books are this model but whatever he's very successful yeah. and people love him so yeah good on well, him and I was telling you uh, that that uh, for me, these movies have like a, a death to hotness ratio. Exactly. Like how much do they try to traumatize <laughs> you and how hot is the romance? Like you back, you back and forth, back and forth. There's like a, and then like certain ones get the like Venn diagram kind of perfect of like. <laughs> yeah. You're like, it is, you know, I will uh, sustain the trauma because everyone is hot and it's nice yeah. and steamy or something. Yeah. These are acceptable lines. When you love a romance movie, 
Mm-hmm. You have to draw lines <laughs> because some of the best romance movies are depressing. Yes. Let's be honest. Uh, some that are remembered, like Love Story, for example. Um, uh-huh. It's remembered so well. Why? Because it's sad. Yeah. And there is something about a sad love story. <laughs> it's true. I mean, it goes all the way back to like, um, oh, what's that one called with the, um, oh, shoot, with um, Betty Davis. She's like crying. She's the mother. Um <sighs> Is a gangster or the one where she goes blind when she goes blind oh that's a dark victory mm-hmm. yeah i mean so it goes that oh yeah you, that's we, a great you one can, you can go way <laughs> back to that kind of thing um and uh and um the uh and there's what was the one there's one that um bet midler was in the remake um uh, is it the remake of Stella Dallas? Yes. It's not really. Is that a love story? It's more like a, I find that more like a mother daughter thing. But like the melodrama. The melodrama of it, yes. Yeah, yeah. Melodrama yeah. is in so many different categories. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It works That's well, right. I think, for family dysfunction and romance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess let's dive in and uh, see. So, what do you have at number 11? I have the choice. Mm hmm. I don't know where to begin describing these films. Um, So I'm going to take a moment here. Uh, This one, I don't, this one has stars Teresa Palmer and Benjamin Walker and Maggie Grace in a thankless role. Um, But I I don't think this one has much chemistry and I don't think anybody gives their best acting performance in this movie. And the plot twist drives me bonkers in this one. Because I think it negates a lot of what the story, of what we see. Mm -hmm. Uh, Basically, we have, he's a veterinarian and he instantly falls in love with his new neighbor, uh, Teresa Palmer, who's studying to be a doctor or she's in medical school, I think, at the time. And they both have um, significant partners and they kind of have an affair of sorts and then she becomes engaged to her boyfriend but she's struggling with her feelings they eventually get married they're super happy they've got two kids she gets into a car accident and boom coma so a majority of the movie is her husband he has to decide whether he needs to pull the plug or not you know in the coma yeah and he talks to her and you know and then like so stupid Rachel like <laughs> they lose their house in a storm and he then he he builds a gazebo and finds wind charms I hope I'm remembering this right and then you know he builds a gazebo and he and the wind is blowing the charms and he just knows he's rushing to the hospital it has to do with my wife she's woken from the coma miraculously and plot twist uh, sorry there's going to be major spoilers here Oh, um, yeah, we should say that up front. That, yeah, uh, that these movies can't are talk really about old, these movies but, yeah. without spoilers. Yeah, we can't because it's just, it's hard yeah. to. Yeah. But, you know, and she, she wakes up and she's like, I heard every word you said. And, you know, it was my choice or whatever. And I'm like, this is a movie where no one dies. And mm-hmm. I am constantly waiting for her to die. <laughs> because I do think that her waking it's nice she it's like a miracle you know it's a nice ending they sit in that gazebo at the end with the family and the wind chimes you know mm-hmm. uh, that he lovingly built a gazebo <laughs> but um i just think that it kind of negates like the the choice he has to make um like she makes a choice of waking back up again he makes the choice of not pulling the plug but it negates all that like his talking to her and stuff like that. I can't, I can't believe I was wishing for death in a movie like this, but <laughs> I don't think it, it would have had more poetry just to the, and it's just like you expecting it because of the formula. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think that's what it is too. Yeah. Like I, I, I had a preconceived notion going in. It's been a bit since I've seen this movie, but I've never felt the need to revisit it. Yeah. But I, yeah, it's the preconceived notion about it, but I do think like he's pouring his heart, telling the love story and I think that that is poignant as well, even if she had died. But, you know, I mean, they had kids. A happy yeah. ending is good, but I don't think anything works. I think the chemistry is off. I, you know, there's a yeah. lot of 
It just the movie doesn't work for me. I agree. I have this at eleven, and I I think why do you have Superman in your movie? You have Tom Welling in your movie, and you do like nothing. Oh my gosh! With him. Completely forgot that he was in that movie. Yeah, completely you do nothing forgot. with him at all, and uh, and uh, I also thought that this movie I I haven't watched it in a bit, but. Uh, that it was wasn't as well made as most of no, it's the not. movies. Everything looked kind of pink, and like the no. color grading was a little weird. I thought, and um, it was just like a everything looked kind of off. And you just don't get that like if you're talking about the uh, death to hotness ratio, it's like the it's just all off here. It There's is just all off. Too many scenes where she's like in a coma and and not enough hot scenes. Uh, you know, no. frolicking on the beach and. Uh, it just it just doesn't do it. I kind of feel it's like because I like Teresa Palmer. Uh, people go watch a Discovery of Witches, amazing mm-hmm. show, amazing yeah. books. But anyway, I'm done uh, <laughs> pimping that. <laughs> no, I don't even think Teresa Palmer is used well here no. either. I I kind of feel like it's a thankless role for everybody involved. I yeah. don't know. It just doesn't work. Yeah. Something is off in this movie, and I don't know if it's the script adaptation. I don't know if it's how it was directed or the yeah. or how the actors were directed to do something. It just doesn't really work. Yeah, yeah I agree. Well, what do you have at 10? <sighs> the Best of Me. A movie that yeah. I still, when I think of it, I still get angry because it has an absolutely terrible plot twist. It really does. I it was is, actually it is so bad. So weird because I was digging this movie until that plot twist, Rachel. Yeah. I don't know I, why, but I was liking this movie. But it okay, these are two beautiful people, James Marston, Michelle Monaghan, and um basically it's about um they're adults now, but they were former uh high school sweethearts and and uh, you know, as Hallmark has taught us, there's no greater love that a person can have <laughs> than their high school sweetheart. Yes. But uh, of course, uh, yes. we have sort of flashbacks between them in the present and them in high school. But essentially, he comes from a terrible criminal family and he um, as you know, ran away to live with uh, a sort of his surrogate father, uh, Tucker. Mm-hmm. I think that was his name. And yeah. Um, he starts dating her and you know they love the love heals him or whatever but um <laughs> one day his father beats up tucker and he grabs a gun and he's like i'm gonna go kill him and it goes wrong poor innocent cousin dies and you know in order to get less time in jail he testifies against his family and he sort of breaks up with his girlfriend uh, i believe her name was amanda because, yeah, she tries to visit him. Right, she tries to visit prison. him, and he's like, "No, live your um, life, go to college. I'm a loser." Yeah. So years, I, what is it like? Twenty years later, Tucker yeah. dies. They he leaves the house to both of these guys. She's married to you know a total jerk, a total jerk. Uh, and so there, it's kind of like, will they or won't they? You know, I loved yeah. all that. I even loved the flashbacks. So I was like, there's next chemistry abound. There's some sexy scenes with these teenagers. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's uh, these are grown people playing teenagers, but you're like, yeah. oh, it's a sexy scene with these teenagers. You know? <laughs> it's kind of steamy. It's all great. And then, you know, she's like, I'm going to leave my terrible husband because I'm in love. And then the plot twist happens. And it's, I wanted to jump out of a window when I first it saw it. It really is. And here it goes, people. As she's leaving her husband to go meet him, he gets attacked by his brothers and his father kills him. He shoots him. He is murdered, Rachel. They murder this man. And you're like, excuse me? And then she gets a call from her, uh, you know, her, her son has gotten into a car accident and he needs a heart transplant. Guess whose heart he gets immediately. Yes. And then she finds out that he's dead. And then later on, she finds out that he has the heart. And isn't it so sweet that she'll forever be connected to her, to a man that she truly loved for all these years through through the heart. He gave the ultimate gift. And I I wanted to throw myself out a window when I first watched this, Rachel. I was, I'm being very dramatic here, but I couldn't, I was angered, so angered at this. I I was like, they murdered him. They murdered this man. 
I thought for sure. I was like, the twist is definitely going to be he's going to get into a car accident. And he was like, and he probably is going to be the the heart donor for this kid who's yeah. sickly, you know. Right. I, I thought something was going to go on that end. I didn't know he was going to flat out be murdered. Yeah. You know, that's what surprised me. Poetry. Poetry. I don't know what's wrong with you. Uh <laughs> I think it's just. I mean, it's terrible. I'm just teasing. But like, yeah, yeah I had never seen this. This is what. Oh, I boy. <laughs> so. Yeah, the doing this project meant I had a, a long day where I was watching. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Nicholas Sparks movies in a row, <laughs> and this was one of them. I do have it just a hair higher, just on the hotness level. Exactly. I but I, I thought I struggled with the placement yeah. of this movie because it is like you have steamy moments in the past and present, and and, and I love I mean, me a flashback romance movie. Yeah, you know? I mean, because not only do you have James Marsden and Michelle Monaghan, but you got Luke Bracy. I mean, oh, oh. yes, oh oh my gosh, yeah, I know. Sign me up for more of that. And, I do uh, love the part where she goes, "I can't believe that you've just gotten hotter as you've gotten older. Why couldn't you have gotten fat and bald?" <laughs> I love that moment. You know, where she's mad at him for still being hot in the yeah. present. But yeah, and then it. I put it at 10 because I hated the twist so much. Yeah, I, that's I totally, fully expected totally one of them bad. to die. I did. Yeah. Um, but wow. <laughs> yeah, so, fun. so mom, I found out today who, uh, who was my heart oh, the donor. The donor is, yeah. Yeah. His name was Dawson. Oh, yeah. And she, oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. really? <laughs> Isn't it a couple of years after he gets the heart transplant, she figures, she finds that out? I don't know. I can't remember, but he's like in college, yeah. you know, and so, yeah. Yeah, so it, it is a wild, hey, like... Because <laughs> I do know that she dreams about him, and then she wakes up and her mother tells him yeah. that he has been killed. And so mm -hmm. she, she's like, oh, he came to me in a dream. And it is sometime later that she finds out that it's his heart. And yeah. it's like the most romantic thing ever to her. And I'm like, <laughs> no. I mean, at least that's like <laughs> memorably bonkers and ridiculous so right but for me yeah. number 10 goes to probably the most forgettable one of this canon uh it's uh dear john is number uh -huh. 10 for me um I that at nine not yeah. high on the hotness scale even Absolutely though obviously not. there's a very attractive people we're talking about degrees here um but they have no chemistry channing tatum and amanda seyfried this was when he was like in a phase where he's doing movies like this, like he did The Vow and That's you know, right. like, yeah. a, a whole bunch. Uh, and he, he was trying to, like, I guess, prove that he was like an actor, you know, I do <laughs> drama and whatever. I'm not just and, hot. <laughs> yeah, not just hot, uh, but I needed more hotness. And uh, this is just completely forgettable. There's nothing memorable it's about this true. movie at all. It's true. I like this was a movie I struggled to put in my placement. Because yeah. I do remember going with my best friend. Yeah, my my best friends. We went to go see this and we left disappointed. We thought there'd be more of it because we were so excited to see this movie. Because I remember the trailers just promised you something different. And, mm -hmm. and you're watching this movie and you're like, okay, so <laughs> it's a literal Dear John letter <laughs> that he gets. If anybody grew up watching that Dear John old uh, 1980s TV show where it's a, a therapy group because they all get letters, Dear John letters being dumped, that's what <laughs> that's what this movie is. But because, you know, because they're apart all this time because he's in the army, he's in the military, and they're writing letters. And then the way they break it up, you know, the, I've fallen for somebody else. I mean, she only married that dude because he was done. Oh, Somebody does die in this movie. Two people die, actually. Yeah. Um, but not the main couple. But, you know, so they meet. They fall in love. He, ha I can't believe, like, I remember watching this and I was like, they put 9-11 in this movie, which I was like, no. Because yeah. he does re-enlist because of 9-11. And, and she's upset about it, but okay, because they write all these letters. Because they've fallen in love within, like, two weeks, I think, when they first meet up. Mm -hmm. And... Her neighbor is Tim and he's got an autistic son. And then she's like, I think your dad's autistic because he collects coins and that upsets him. <laughs> so stupid. And um, and they write all these letters. And then one day she's like, oh, I met somebody else. I'm getting married. Bye. And yeah. he's like, excuse me. And that just and he spends this movie spans so many years. Um, 
and we go into the future, I think, a little bit outside of 2010, I think. But basically, she marries Tim because he's, you know, and then he yeah. comes home because his dad died and Tim's got leukemia. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and she's given up well, her it, dreams of having a horse ranch. It's this the, so this weird. Has, There's a it, lot going on here. Yeah, all and over it, the place. I mean, I'm amazed you remember all those details, but um, <laughs> but the the this one has some of the weakest acting. Like totally, see, most yeah. of these movies, like even the best of me, like the acting is like fine. You know, it's just this ridiculous oh, yeah, plot. Yeah. Um, this it, it is is pretty try hard. The acting, they don't really and, have that much chemistry. No, she, poor no. Amanda Seyfried has no chemistry with any of her leading men here. Uh, yeah. just maybe the kid, yeah. right? <laughs> maybe yeah. the stepson. But the um, fact that he then sells his father's, you know, coin things and gives it to Tim so he can get treatment for Tim to die anyway is bizarre. Right. Like they could have saved Tim's life, you know. <laughs> and I do think that the ending is weak. I yeah, because they meet up again and it kind of leaves you on a hopeful note that they will get back together. And I don't like that. I think that they should have just had it. It was, it was a a romance that meant a lot. But not every relationship needs to be a forever relationship. You know, you can end a movie where it's, it's just over. It meant a mm-hmm. lot at the time, but, you know, it's it's done with. I would have preferred it like that. I, I wouldn't have, pref- I don't prefer it with the hopeful ending. Because, yeah. again, I think that's kind of a cop out. And so, you know, I don't even know if, if he should have really given her a second chance. Because he never moves on. He's forever in love with her. Yeah, and she's clearly torn between two men, and how she doesn't pick Shannon Tate, and I don't know. Because have yeah. you seen him? Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's being very vain, by the way. <laughs> but in a movie, you know, but I can't remember that. Who's the other guy? I can't remember who he is either. I know Richard <laughs> Jenkins. Jenkins plays his dad. Yeah. I am well, amazed I remember that much of it, but I, yeah, I do, you know, incredible. it is disappointing. <laughs> well, my number nine is the lucky one. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, so yeah. this one, of course, you've got like your soldier that managed to walk all the way across the country and uh, wow. no, not a slick of totally dust. Uh, yeah. no, not a, he's no worse for the wear. That's for sure. Um, this, I feel, I don't think that she actually is a lot older than him, but I feel like she feel like she's know. not she's not styled and make up well which is unusual for these movies usually they are um it's it just it's not made to look all that attractive and that's you know the hotness scale is important in this movie i'm not saying she's not attractive i'm saying the way they styled her in this film and uh and, and there's just no chemistry at all so this mm, one's no. just boring and no, i agree yeah uh, this was a first watch for me because I had mm. never seen The Lucky One. This was the only uh, Nicholas Sparks that I hadn't seen. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of these I haven't watched in a long time and I rewatched some. But yeah, so I I, <laughs> I went off and rented this one because it's you know not streaming anywhere. And I was like, I, I put this one at my number eight. So we're not that far off. Yeah. I I didn't know what their age difference was supposed to be because... I know. Do you feel like she was older? I, I do feel like she was much older. Yeah. Not much older. Maybe five years older, a few years. You know, because she was married and had a child and divorced. And I think Zac Efron said he was 25, right? In the movie? Something like that, yeah. And he was probably that age when he did this. And and he, this was hit him as an actor trying to break out from uh, Disney, from the, you know, from his. Uh, Ch- child you know the movies he did when he was a teenager and a she's child, three you know? years older than him but i'm I was well, saying, she looked like, much older than him in the she movie she looked much older than him and, and it, that's, and that's not, fair to say but i just you're right about her styling i i couldn't tell because he does have a baby face he looks very mm-hmm. young and that's and, fine if if it's part of the plot if it's acknowledged I don't, yeah but if it's just if it's just, I don't know. It, it just, I just, it, it does wasn't look weird. Feeling yeah. the chemistry it, between the two of them. Yeah, it was a it's problem. it's amazing that there's only three. Years. Maybe because he was such a. I think if he had done this now, because he has such a different look, he's matured more. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. you know, getting older. I just think he still has that like baby look, and it 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 like. Not that an age difference, even if she was like five, six, maybe even ten years, it doesn't matter. They're adults. Um. 
but you know it just it kind of looked a little weird because he looked like a it baby did. almost it really did yeah yeah, yeah. so and so yeah. uh i mean all it's right. kind of steamy but yeah there i did just... laugh at that love scene i don't know if i'm immature or <laughs> i just laughed at the mechanics of it but uh it got got me a chuckle, so it's a yeah. little bit of both. <laughs> yeah. Well, my number eight is uh is where I put the bonkersness that is safe haven. Mm -hmm. I have that at eight. Uh, yeah, this was the first time watch for me. I'd heard about it. I kind of knew the twist going in about the the ghost mom, um, and uh, this one is like the the one that tries to be like a lifetime thriller. Mm. Um, which totally. I'm, yeah, which I, I'm not sure that that works at all. But um, but basically, she, Juliana Huff, she's like the woman on the run. Uh, and she stops in Safe Haven. And uh, she meets <laughs> hunky Josh Duhamel, who's like our man with many jobs. He's like good at everything. And he like helps her with her place. And and uh, they fall in love, but he's like a widower. And uh, Colby Smolders is like hanging around, always giving advice and whatever. And big reveal, she's she's the uh, ghost ex uh, wife, you know, dead yeah. dead wife, dead wife. Um, and uh, what a moment when that yeah. is revealed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, like, this does pretty good a hotness factor, I would say, to very very beautiful people and lots of lots of a uh, sun dipped uh kissing and things like that um but it, and it's more just i i put it higher than the lucky winner dear john because it's like memorable at least right well we forgot to mention in the lucky one which i don't know if it's weird or not but you know he goes looking at her because he found a picture of her when he was in the army yeah and uh that might be a little weird to some but he walks whatever. across the country yeah, too, to find her. But anyway, yeah. so for my, I have Safe Haven at seven. So we're very okay, close yeah, in, we our, really in our are. ranking. Yeah. I put this at seven simply because it was bonkers. Yeah. But I wanted to ask memorable. you. Yeah. Did you find it successful, like when you were first watching it? Like, did you think that she was innocent? Because the movie starts off kind of making you believe, sort of tricking you uh, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. she is did something wrong and she's running away from it. She committed a crime. Yeah. But it turns out she just has a crap, an abusive husband who yeah. happens to be a cop, which is is also a plot point in the lucky one. Um, True. Because um, he's an also a, kind of an abusive, not really that, ter he's a terrible person, but not as bad as this guy in Safe Haven. And I, I remember feeling no way that she did anything. I kind of remember like yeah. figuring it out that this guy was abusive to her. But- my main question is, did you ever figure anything out with Kobe Smulders or were you totally blown by that when it came up? It's a little unfair because I knew already. Oh, you knew going it. in. Yeah, okay. it's been spoiled for me. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I... Because uh, I started thinking, I didn't think anything at first when I first watched this. I still remember my reaction. But I think after a while, you didn't see her with anybody else. And I'm like, this is weird. And then when Josh, <laughs> after she kills her husband in self-defense, because, uh, oh, my gosh, she's throwing him in the river. There's just very dramatic. <laughs> this is a very unique Nicholas Sparks yeah, movie. Yeah, no, it is. Because Except of the, brings yeah, on the, thriller. the thriller aspect of it. But when she reads, like, the wife has left, of course, the wife died of cancer. She's left all these beautiful letters to her children for special days that she's not going to be a part. That's actually a great thing. But that she leaves a letter to the eventual new woman in her husband's life. Like, what happens if they break up? Is he going to take that letter back and give it to yeah. somebody else? But anyway, <laughs> I guess not because Ghost Mom. But when she reads that letter and she looks at the picture and she's like, oh, like, she, you know, and I'm like, Ghost Mom, I laugh. Was, I don't know if I was supposed to laugh, but I was so amused. It's a howler, no question. It's a howler, but I have to say that if you want to have some kind of fun, I think Safe Haven, if you want to have a fun Nicholas Sparks yeah. movie, Safe Haven might be it. I'd agree. Because it won't get yeah. you mad like the best of me, you know. Right, yeah. But this one is kind of fun with Ghost Mom popping up everywhere. Yeah. That's true. I can see that. Yeah, I think it's a good argument. Yeah. We'd like to take a second to thank our sponsor of this episode of the podcast. It's Love in Tandem by Becca Kinzer. 
This hilarious fake relationship road trip rom-com is one you won't want to miss this spring. Charlotte is perfectly content leading her quiet life as a music teacher in her hometown, but then she gets roped into a 500-mile tandem bicycle challenge to fundraise for her music program, and her partner is her ex-fiance's adventure-loving brother Zach, and the whole town just happens to think they're dating. What could go wrong? Plenty, it turns out. As Charlotte and Zach navigate the literal and figurative bumps in the road, Together, they'll realize tandem biking might just be the start of their biggest adventure yet. Love in Tandem is the perfect book for readers who enjoy witty banter and will-they-won't-they they chemistry. You can find this laugh-out-loud new romance from Becca Kinzer wherever you buy your books. And learn more about Becca at BeccaKinzer.com. That's BeccaKinzer.com or use the affiliate link below. I have best the best of me at seven mm-hmm. just because it was memorable yeah, and it how is. bonkers it is. And it is not only it has so many beautiful people. Totally. Hotness. Shirtless. High. Hotness. High. Like, <laughs> like, you know what? Stop you can be James Marsden and Luke Bracey. Right. Gonna stop go the movie. Just stop the movie when she decides to leave her husband to go back to her. Yeah. To go back to him. Just stop the movie right there and live live in that fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> it's in no world an actual good movie, but no. <laughs> it uh it's memorable. It's memorable. Yeah. Um all right. What do you have at six? I have this one is the last song. Yeah, um, I have at five. So yeah, yeah. we're pretty close. I would this. say this one is more a re- a, like father daughter relationship. But mm-hmm. I gotta say, because M- Miley Cyrus is in this one. What a stupid kid that she is. <laughs> like, her parents get divorced. And she takes that hard. And she's about, like, 17, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think she's a 17-year-old. Yeah. And she's a, a prodigy, a gifted uh, pianist. pianist. And that her her father is her teacher as well. She's about to go into Juilliard. But she throws that all away, Rachel, because her parents got divorced. Yeah. And now she has to be a bratty kid who shoplifts. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so as punishment for shoplifting, her mother sends her to Georgia to spend the summer, her and her younger brother, with her father. Yes. And, uh, of course, she hasn't spoken to him in three years because divorce. I, you know, I don't understand. But anyway, um, so it's touch and go. She, she's really crabby. And she's even mean to the hot guy, Liam Hemsworth. And um, I think this is the movie where they first met and got together. You know, yeah. They were I mean, famous, I would like, say though, uh-huh. most people, if they looked at this movie and it, they would be like, "The," I think that people would think it's more terrible than it actually is. No, it's not. I know because like the funny she's thing is, actually like decent and she's like decent. Like she, like you could tell she's struggling. That's why I think she's stupid. But you know, like because they, they they protect a, a turtle eggs, so that's when she you know yeah. gives gives the hot guy a second chance, and from then it grows. You know, she gets her father's accused of burning down the church, and you find out the real mm-hmm. reason. Um, hot guy yeah. did it, and there is cancer. You know, and Lots. of course the daddy's dying, and yeah. she goes back to playing piano, and and you know the song he composed for her, she finishes mm-hmm. it, and of yeah. course he dies while she plays it, and. She's yeah. in a relationship with, you know, with him and it ends up being touching. I, I do. It's not, this is another not typical Nicholas Sparks because I think it focuses more on the relationship between the father and daughter and mending those bridges, mm-hmm. especially before he dies, which is, is a nice touch. And, and we have a romance and, you know, the added bonus of a romance to yeah, it. I watched it for uh, the 2010 Disney ranking that I did over on my channel. I uh, forgot this my is friend a Disney Stanford. Movie. Yeah, yeah, it's technically a Disney Disney yeah. film, and we were both surprised at like how decent it was. Like, it's yeah, it's not pretty great, decent. Yeah, but it's not as bad as you think it's going to be. No, yeah, it's true. It's true because I don't. It's hard to place this as like true romance romance because I don't believe it is. Yeah, um, yeah I agree, and. But- I mean, and the sullen, miserable teenager is is like my least favorite it's archetype in, take, in yeah. movies. So it's just That's, not really yeah. my jam. But like, but it's done pretty well, and Greg Kinnear's really good in it. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, so it has. A and even if you're looking at the young love 
I think because, you know, Liam Hemsworth and Miley Cyrus, famously a couple uh, yeah. for many years, uh, I think you can tell that they really dug each other in this movie. Yeah. And, and that that translates in, into the relationship that they're portraying on screen. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's, it's a nice, it's kind of heartfelt in a way, you know, yeah. and it's kind of hard to, I, I really struggle to like, you know, where do I place this? Because I didn't really you know, feel that it was a hundred percent of like true blue melodramatic mm -hmm. romance. Yeah. But yeah. you know, I say give this a shot. Like if you probably one of the better things my Miley has done acting yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Um well my number six is where I have message in a bottle. Uh, um mm -hmm. and this one is hard because just the acting alone is pretty pretty good. I mean especially when you got like Paul Newman and know. you know stuff like that. Um but I really don't like this plot. It is. I have this higher message in a bottle. Mm -hmm. I rewatched it too because I it had been so Her, long. I didn't remember much of it, but it is depressing. Finding his his message of he's the lonely widower, and she she comes uh, and uh, and I don't know. I just really I, don't see. Like he, she finds and a message like in, in a, in a, and you're just like, what? Why are you upset? Uh. Well, it luckily that doesn't last that long, but like. It is a movie about profound grief, mm -hmm. if you really think about it. And she finds a message in a bottle. She's a researcher at a newspaper uh, in, Ch yeah. in, in Chicago. Oh, gosh. I will say that this movie was done in 1999. It looks so great. It's just like, you know what I mean? Like, it's before. <laughs> it just looks like uh, I have the nostalgia for movies looking the way that it does. Um and like so she tracks him down and she yeah. doesn't tell him the reason why but he is struggling to move on from this it's profound grief he loved his wife so much what i think is stupid is is her family fighting over the paintings and calling yeah. him a thief over it i'm like no that was his wife she died everything you know yeah it would belong to him but i don't it know is, it's just kind of yeah boring. it's a story about yeah, like finding like love again and yeah um it's so it's it's sad, but yeah. I don't know. It is well acted though, so I can see yeah. having it higher. But looks, um, looks nice too. What do you have at you? You had last song at five. Uh, oh. no, last song I had at six. Oh, at six. Okay, so what yeah. do you have at five? I have at five nights in uh, Rodan, Rodan, Rodan. Yeah, 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 I have that at it. four. So we're really close on this. Wow, I couldn't even remember the name of that movie um, <laughs> because it is quite forgettable. I put it at five. I rewatched this one too because I couldn't remember nothing. I watched um, this for the first time. This was my third wait. in my um, trilogy of Sparks movies this week. Actually, actually, no, I don't think I had watched this movie before. If I'm, I think I might have thought that I had watched it mm -hmm. because I did watch Diane uh, Lane and Richard Gere together in um, Unfaithful. Unfaithful. That's it. And so they're kind of reteaming here. This mm -hmm. has really great actors in it, but. It is a little bit boring, but I do find um, the relationship and how they come together interesting. Like, I, I like that. I just, I hate that he dies in the end. Like, can yeah. we stop this? It's please? really annoying. It's so annoying because she's going through a separation, a divorce. And, oh my gosh, this was before Viola Davis really blew up. But she is cast as like the black best friend who just will help out the white yeah who's her there white just to answer friend. phone calls at all hours of the at day. all hours and like hold her hand and tell Let her, her state okay house. and i was like oh no not viola davis yeah. like, <laughs> but you gotta remember this movie's back in 2018 and i think this is i don't know if this is right before she she blew up but it is like it's like oh no don't do that to viola davis right <laughs> when you go back and watch these old movies like that but and so and you know he is also divorced but he's also a patient died um and during yeah so this is 2008 yes you say 18 it was oh i said 18 I'm, I'm sorry yeah. i'm incorrect 2008, 2008. Uh, yeah. and so this was three years before she was in the help that was her. oh yeah like, okay this, so. that's where I think a lot of people heard of her yeah but um but yeah, yeah. i mean and, it does uh, have good good hotness level it does yeah. have it it's very strong cast it looks a lovely movie that that place was a lovely lovely locations that they shot yeah. and you know what i even i even like the subplot of him 
talking to the family, um, uh, Scott Glenn of, uh, of, uh, you know, of the wife that died because he's operating mm -hmm. uh, during the operation. I like that subplot too. Like, like, I'm sorry, you know, like, I'm sorry she died. I went over it all like that real healing moment and, you know, it, and, and really stuff with his son. They're trying to get him to have some empathy. Yes, right. That was I think that was a really good moment with that character because he mm -hmm. was so because you've seen it, he doesn't really have that and you it makes you want these people to get together. And when they write letters, it's just so old fashioned and charming, you know? And, yeah. then, and then he then... dies. Yeah. It was He dies. <laughs> you know, he's he's over there. I forgot where he goes when his son is a doctor and, and it's um He's like in he drowns. South America or something yeah. like that. Yeah. He drowns during a rainstorm. He dies like that. And I was like, no. And poor Diane Lane is like, no. And she is so <laughs> depressed and sad, but looking so beautiful and upkept, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, she's sad, but she still took a shower, Rachel. <laughs> she took a shower because <laughs> she looks very put together in her sadness while right. her daughter <laughs> takes care of her. And it's a nice little coming together between her and her daughter who she's having um problems with and mm -hmm. here's the thing that i don't know i know that divorce affects children and i've known plenty of people who've got divorced and their and their teenage kids who have dealt with it but there is a, a reaction that all teenage kids have to be completely surly when their parents get divorced even it even when it's the most unhealthiest of marriages and i, don't, I was like oh, that's not true to life like you know, yeah. sometimes it is, but I I think that it's so much more heightened in films. Um, it's true. I mean, and at least this isn't like the whale where there's like no humanity at all, right? This, uh, and no attempt to kind of understand. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's there's probably a lot elevated, going on in this movie. Yeah. Elevated a little bit by the fact that I just think Mae Whitman is a, such a good actress. Oh, totally. Uh, and you know that, what? I love too how the daughter just. She's not like me. She just doesn't understand why her parents have to break up. So she's not a hundred percent. Well, and especially ready. because the dad, the the dad offers he he apologizes. He says, "Oh, at the end he, he makes too because he's using the kids to try to get well, back." Even at the beginning, he thing. says, yeah. "Like, you know, don't go on this trip. Like, let's get back together." No, I would have not gone back. Yeah, because he got dumped, Rachel. That's yeah, why. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, he wanted to go but, home, but he from the dumped. daughter's perspective, <laughs> yeah, she, she doesn't you know, she know thinks... any better. So she's not like a terrible teen in this. I just like calm yeah. down a little bit, you know. That you're no, I agree. Like, you know? like that, the, like I said, the ultimate example of that is the, in the in the whale. Like, yeah, absolutely atrocious. And uh, but but, um, but yeah, I mean, this is. This is high on the death rate and high, Why? On, the, Why? high on the beautiful people rate, the hotness totally. rate. Totally. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty satisfying in the end, but I will say, poor Viola Davis did have to play the best friend in this, but she does have a scene yeah. where she's got a hot man next to her. Yeah, that was her. so random. I that was, was so random, her, but I was but like, like, yes, thank you, girl. Go get some. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so. At least she had that in the movie, right? <laughs> yeah, that was funny. I thought that too. Uh, okay, what do you have at four? I This is where I have the longest ride. And I yeah. really enjoy this movie. I think maybe because it parallels the notebook in a little bit because yeah. we have two stories set in the present and in the past. And I don't know. Um, it just works for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the chemistry is fully there, but it just works for me. Yeah. And Scott Eastwood is a clone of his father, um, but still very hot in this movie. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, Britt Robertson, bless her heart, but she does look like a little, little girl in this movie. But these are beautiful people. And it's basically, yeah. he's a rodeo um, guy. She's he's a like rider. An what do you call it? He's a... a, a um, you like ride to rodeo, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm and, trying to remember the typical, uh, the proper name for that. Um, yeah, but he does the horses, and she's an uh, into like art. Boss. Yeah, and, yeah, and she's like an art. She's runs. She's like an art dealer. Yes, she runs an art dealer, yeah. and they start to date. They're polar opposites, though. Yeah, 
And because they're polar opposites, he's like, this ain't going to work. And she's like, you can't, because he got injured and he's not supposed to ride anymore, yeah. but he continues to do so because he wants to get the money and help out his mom and stuff. And he mm -hmm. just doesn't want to end his career that soon. And he's struggling with it and, and she can't understand him. But uh, on their first date, they rescue this, uh, this older man from a car accident um, played by Alan Alda and she visits him a lot in the hospital and he has these letters and she reads the letters to him and they're just letters that he and his wife wrote to his wife is now deceased that he had that they wrote when they first met and it flashes back to the 40s and how, when they first met and fell in love and wanted to get married and she wants a huge family and he gets injured in the war and he can't have children because of that. And the flashback is just, I think it's a beautiful story of the struggling of, I wanted a family, but now I have a different type of life. I yeah. kind of equate it to the first 10 minutes of Up. When you see, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, uh, it's weird to equate that, but you see how they, she wanted a life together, but she kind of gave it up. But she was happy because they were in love. And they just made choices and sacrifices. And that's what he keeps telling mm -hmm. her to work on the relationship because it's work. Yeah. You have to make uh you have to make sacrifices, you have to um choose compromise and stuff. And they made it work despite her dream of having a children and and an adoption that failed through and it, it's really sad. And mm -hmm. uh, and then you know, he realizes when he wins his last ride that it's hollow because she's not there and they get back together and like crazy that he has this art collection of course the, this older man has an art collection and you know scott eastwood yeah. to show his love buys the painting <laughs> buys the painting that the boy that they wanted to adopt uh did of of uh, uh, uh the woman the woman who was played by yeah. Una Ch uh, Chapman, who had passed, you know, who's now since passed away, and because of that, he inherits all the paintings, and all, which is worth a lot of money, and so it's a very happy ever after. That's like kind of weird. Like, all right, mm -hmm. we didn't have to, we didn't have to have, you know, <laughs> get yeah. All these nobody paintings. gets cancer in this. Nobody gets cancer. Nobody. Yes, there's. Yeah. Nobody really dies because she, you know, Una Chapman is 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 dead already by the start of this movie. Uh, while well, her character, like in the later years, but it is a touching love story yeah. about it ain't easy. You have to you have to work at it. Yeah, I, I know, do think that this me. is definitely the most underrated of totally. this list. I I have it at two. I have a little higher. Oh yeah, but uh, but it's got high on the hotness scale. Totally, high. that shower like yeah. a shower scene. <laughs> it's it's hot. It's and, hot. Uh, and I, I think pretty pretty good chemistry, and it's basically the same story as the Notebook, but yes. uh, but we yeah. have more likable characters, and uh, and uh, it's kind of hard to not to get long winded explaining these movies because there's so yeah. many side plots. There really, is. and I, I, I'm, I'm trying to explain you do this well movie, though. You're and good. I'm like, hold on, I'm getting distracted by this side story <laughs> here. Let me go back to the main. It's kind of like my mind wanders sometimes because yeah. there's a lot. A lot happens in a Nicholas Sparks movie. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I. So what do you have at three? I have a walk to remember. Okay. You no, know, it yeah. is. It is for me probably the better uh, teen love, teen cancer love stories, because there are so many stories about teenagers yeah. who fall in love and one of them has cancer. Yeah. Here's uh, a funny story. So I, I one here, my my, <laughs> young, I have a sister that's 18 years younger than than me, and there's this, um, this like Mormon movie called Charlie about a. Uh, it's very similar to Walk to Remember about a girl who gets, they have this love and then she gets cancer and whatever. And one year without really thinking about it, we got for, I think it was for Christmas. We got my, we got her a Walk to Remember and Charlie oh, for wow. Christmas. And we, we didn't even think about it. She's like, you got me two cancer movies. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll take this over a fault fault to uh fault to the stars oh. or whatever. Oh, no question. I'm I'm still aghast that they clapped for them kissing in Anne Frank's oh. uh in the Anne Frank's attic. I was like, excuse me. Oh. And that whole plot in uh, in Fault in Our Stars with the with the professor is one of Which, the most manipulative things I have ever seen. When he when he rails them out for 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 being for having you know cancer and for being like sucks on humanity <laughs> and and uh, and it's terrible. just no human being would say that no one would do that and no when one I would saw it clap. I would, if you made out in Anne Frank's attic either. Ugh. So oh I, that was one of my early, like most unpopular yes. opinions. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, I really didn't like uh fault in our stars. So I'm with you there, but like, but yeah, I mean, this gets, uh, I have this uh, number one on my list, but oh, yeah. the, the, the thing about it for me is that not only do they have great chemistry and like it ends really, even though it's sad, it sweetly, you know, yeah. from the very beginning that she's sick. And so it doesn't yes. feel as manipulative. These ones where it's like surprise cancer, you know? No. Um, uh, and it's not, I also hate the movies where like the person dying is like your now motivational tool for life. You know, like uh, oh, true, before yeah. you, especially that was just <laughs> disgusting. But um, this like it, it's it's just handled so much better. You know, like yes, it's he is motivated to live a better life because of her. Yeah, because he's a, but, that trope of him being a bad boy and and love yeah. will change him. But it like, works though for this movie. But like it, it, it it's not is he really did they had a great love and so it's their love. Yeah. They, they were married and they because they're wonderful. teenagers and everybody thinks yeah. that's okay <laughs> yeah i mean i think it was okay because it was yeah, just I mean, you had yeah. this moment of She's time dying, had, right yeah 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 this moment of time and it's just i think it's really well executed yeah. and and the fact that it's basically a musical it gets like totally. a bump for me yeah. as well you've got nice songs oh, throughout me. and so it is my favorite of these movies but yeah but yeah um it you, uh it's it, it's got all those tropes but uh, i think it totally executes like, them as well do you think that he got the proper punishment for all the bad things he did like the principal's like you got to take a tutor and be in the play i was like is that the proper punishment hey I, I i think that we should try that more often <laughs> uh, the reforming right because like plays. it's so funny because like <laughs> then he finally notices uh uh you know, uh, um, Mandy, they look like babies in this movie. Because don't they at the beginning, like, the person gets, like, really injured, Well, because right? they the do prank. a prank jumping off the pier, and yeah. his friend gets injured, and he's surly, but he feels bad, but he's just hanging with the kids, and, and man, yeah. they all look like babies in this movie, though, because I watched the trailer. I just watched the trailer, because yeah. it had been a while. I remember this movie well, but it had been a while since I seen it. And it was super popular when it came out. At least that's my memory of it. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, like, <laughs> I was like, is that a proper punishment for him? But yeah, and, you know, and he's like, I don't know you. And she's like, we're not going to. I do love that. He's like, I need, can you please help me? I've ignored you all all through our school, you know, uh, through yeah. our school. But can you please help me? And she's like, yes, but don't fall in love with me. Yeah. I was like, all right, being a little bit presumptuous there, right, lady? <laughs> It's cute. It's cute. It's yeah, cute. Yeah, yeah. And this is probably a <sighs> teen and romances are hard because and it this is does true. like the bucket list though very well. Oh, I because normally I kind of hate right. that trope too. But I'm I was like, I want to be in two places at one time. And he takes her to this to the state line mm -hmm. and because he's making all of her wishes come true. It's 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 really cute. And she's and she's his miracle, you know, uh at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um but I, teen movies are hard because there have been teen movies that I loved growing up. And then when I watched it as an adult, I was like, uh -huh. what was wrong with me? Because, <laughs> you know, you're in that moment. And I do think that this is a movie, even though it's a teen movie. And it, and it, I think the trope, so many more teen cancer stories came, you know, after it. And there were yeah. a couple of the 80s, too, that I remember. But um, I do think that even if you revisit this as an adult or you watched it as an adult the first time, because when this came out, I was in my 20s when this first came out, um, or very early 20s. Yeah, but, I um, was too. I was 21. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I was about 22 or like 23 when I first saw it. But um, 
I do think it works no matter how old you are. I think you can relate to them. And that is, that's the great, if you can have a successful teen romance movie that can relate to anybody at any age, it's a a successful one. I think this one works. And I um, agree. Yeah, it's true. I mean, the the teenage teenage cancer dramas, you know, things like Ryan's song and, you know, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I you remember know. this, like, people, like, I just remember people, like, love this movie, especially because Mandy Moore was still singing and, and yeah. hot, and, you know, at this moment, yeah. and so was Shane West. Like, th- when I watched that trailer, I was like, babies, they all look like babies. But I yeah. don't know if it's well-remembered today, like you said, or remembered. Yeah, I don't know either. No, I don't know I, how people... I, I, I do have it. it. It'll be interesting to see if this if this notebook musical uh, pa- it plays out and does well. Um, yes, because this I mean, one's this, much the easier. The music's already make. there, so yeah. it's like, it feels like this would be a very easy oh, movie yes. to adapt to. to Mandy Moore is great in this. This was. <laughs> it's funny because I liked Mandy Moore's music when she came out. She wasn't. I don't know if I'm misremembering this, but I don't think she was as successful as a musician as like Christina Aguilera or Britney Spears or all these. No, she was know, like in that people. group. Yeah, but, uh, or, but not as big. Yeah, even uh, what's her face uh, with the. I can't remember her name. She went to acting too. But mm-hmm. I do think that when I saw this movie, I was like, oh, this is where Mandy yeah. Moore shines. Yeah, there was like gets... uh there was like that period where yeah. like Britney Spears, Jessica Simpson. That's it, Jessica uh, Simpson. I don't remember yeah, her name. Like, yeah. yeah, all these people was, like, the were less trying to also be yeah. actors. And, and uh, she succeeded and in she that. Yeah. Was definitely i think the most successful she has a beautiful voice you're talking tangled or this is us or you know like she's proven herself mandy moore at this point to be like a totally and she has got a good great voice as well so i was always kind of bummed she because you know she came at a time where there was so many you know being young and a singer yeah but yeah she's had a great acting career uh kind of like um but at least least she got to use her yeah that girl who won american idol she acts a lot now too um like jennifer hudson no not her oh. well that her too but um oh she's married mm-hmm. to that old guy now what's her name oh Catherine mcphee that's yeah, it Catherine yes McPhee, yeah, which yeah. i think she's has a great voice too but i'm like she's a really good actress as well i yeah she's I an think that, movie that's right i think that she she's done well like in a career path the same with mm-hmm. mandy where they went yeah you know. well i mean and at least mandy got to prove her singing chops in a movie totally. with tangled Oh, totally. And yeah. she sings beautifully in this movie, too. Yeah. A lot of her music is used in it, you know. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the Postable, Hardy, or Hallmarkie in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. So. Um, so you have that at three? I have, have that remember? at three, yeah. So what's your number two? My two is message in a bottle because apparently I like to be sad. <laughs> I don't know. When I rewatch, I remember liking this movie, but I think I liked it more on a rewatch. Okay. I kind of was moved more because I'm watching this in the early hours because I don't sleep. Um you know, <laughs> I took a selfie yeah. of me watching these Nicholas Sparks movies in the middle of the night. <laughs> I do not look happy, Rachel. But um, anyway, um, I had to share it with you one day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I think the story of profound grief and how he, it it's sad because he does die at the end. But I also thought it was very hopeful because he did find a way to move on. Uh, he I was did just find annoyed him. that, like, yeah. he was so outraged that she found the bottle. Like, <laughs> well, no, he was outraged that he didn't, that she didn't tell her. She, yeah, and then how when dare he, you? Why didn't you? Yeah, but he kind of softened when he found the, also his wife's, his dead wife's message in a bottle. Yeah. And he really needed to c- come to that. And I find, like, the relationship with him and Paul yeah. Newman. Paul Newman is so great in this movie. Yeah, I can see that. And I don't know, it touched me. I just yeah. think that despite it having a sad ending, I did find it hopeful that he had hope. 
to to be able to move on. But it's also, it's kind of, I would say it's more of a beautiful love story between him and his dead wife and that unending love that he would always have for her. And I think that there are so many people in life who have moved on after their spouse has died or their partner has died, but that love for their partner is like the greatest. How many people have you let, like, I love this person, but the love of my life was the person who died, you know? Yeah. I know people like that, and there, it's it's touching, and it doesn't diminish the new relationship. But I don't know. It touched me, uh, maybe because I'm older, yeah. and it just hit me in a different way. Yeah. I also love the way it looked. It just, mm -hmm. I felt very nostalgic for those type of yeah i can like see that i can see that the way yeah i didn't rewatch it so maybe it's it's worth a i don't know i mean it, you might still get annoyed with it but i it hit me a little differently yeah, this time yeah so what do you have a number one my number one is the notebook yeah without fail i love mm -hmm. this movie i just it's so great and it's <laughs> in some ways it's a little better than the book because they changed the ending i think the ending is so oh, poignant with, oh yeah because in the uh, spoilers for a 20 year old movie for the notebook but they're in the retirement home and she has dementia or is it alzheimer's i can't remember which one it is now they're basically the same yeah and so he reads to her the journal their love story of how they came to be and we flash back to the 30s and 40s and we see it mm -hmm. and and then we catch on later that that is him and it's a beautiful because she remembers at the end and he has a heart attack and they lie in bed together and they die yeah you know so that's not how it is in the book no oh uh, no Oh. only one of them dies in the book uh -huh. oh. and it's uh you know okay and then uh yeah it's it's sadder in the book where i think in the notebook it's it's sad yeah. but it's touching because she remembers at that moment because she has moments where she remembers when he reads to her because he doesn't even need to to live in that uh mm -hmm. facility which is the house that he built for her which in order I don't know. I can't remember if it's explained that well in the in the movie, but in order for her to always stay in the place that she loved, he turned that into he 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 donated that land and turned it into the nursing home that it is for um for mm -hmm. elderly people. And so he lives there out of choice. He doesn't have to, but it's because he loves her so much he can't leave her alone and all the children are grown and grandchildren and stuff and Mm -hmm. and it's a very touching and when she remembers and then when she forgets and gets confused it's heartbreaking but i don't know i just that ending is sad but it's like so touching because you're like oh true love you know um uh, the way that movies make that true love seem so romantic and beautiful and, and you know stress-free but poor james martin is in this movie too as <laughs> you know the <laughs> yeah cast, the poor I mean, guy he was always cast as the as the yeah. wrong guy or yes. the the one she doesn't pick i have this at three uh i i only because if you really think about it they're uh -huh. kind of horrible like they're kind of jerks and selfish oh sure and, yeah <laughs> and uh and but we don't care because they have such good chemistry such good this chemistry is like, this is the 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 hotness is wow. high. It's high. high, in this high, high. high. And uh and uh and so it works. I like it. I think it's a good movie. But um but I I, yeah. I guess I just I feel like the longest ride that one I have it too because yeah, I feel like I it see, basically yeah. tells the same story but with True. more likable characters and True. uh and it's still got the hotness. It's still got the yeah. um and uh and so yeah, I think that it's kind of a better version of the notebook. Um, yeah, I know. I agree on many points with you on this, but there is something about the notebook that I just adore. Mm -hmm. I remember, as, <laughs> oh my gosh, Rachel, it's it's all coming back to me. I saw this movie in the theater with a my sister's former best friend, who was kind of my best friend too. Uh -huh. uh, but basically, we've turned. <laughs> She was our friend who became our arch enemy. A <laughs> long uh -oh. story, but I have yeah. fond memories. And <laughs> she sobbed through this whole entire movie that when, when I went to go wash my hands in the restroom after the movie was done, people were talking about her because she sobbed so much. <laughs> but I do remember that when they go to that house before it's restored and he tells her the dream that he wants to buy this house and they are almost getting it on and he pulls that blanket off that couch. Yeah. I said out loud, like, like Ew, oh, that hasn't even been washed. You're going to get dust everywhere. <laughs> the whole entire theater erupted laughing because I said that out loud. I didn't mean to. And everybody just started to laugh. 
when I said that. I was like, ew, that's not been <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you know, but I don't know. I I do love oh, I love the present stuff, but I do love the yeah, maybe it's because I love period dramas. And I just love the stuff that's set in the 30s and 40s. Yeah. And, and and you know what? But the longest ride has that too. Absolutely. You know, I just feel like, I like it has the all ride the as well. Yeah, it has all of that too. Yeah. Like the longest but ride as well. But I, like the notebook I don't know, was man. first. And so yeah. you know, and and they do have incredible chemistry, the two of them. I mean, unbelievable. Totally. And uh so I, yeah, and I love I, the agony of them being apart too. Yeah. Yeah. Like the mom's keeping all the letters. I just love oh, that yeah. drama. There's just something like, I can't believe she kept all those letters. And the agony of it. And I was like, I didn't want <laughs> you to end up like me. And I was like, yeah, let your daughter be happy instead of miserable. Though James Marsden right. wasn't a bad guy. You know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just, oh, yeah. and when they, all that stuff in the rain and them on the rowboat. I mean, it's so hot. Yeah, it's so. a lot. It's 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 good. Will that, uh, will that so... music will get that hot, though? So we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, so my ranking, I have Walk to Remember at one, I have yeah. Long Stride at two, I have The Notebook at three, Nights in Rodanthe at four, The Last Song at five, Message in a Bottle at six, The Best of Me at seven, Safe Haven at eight, The Lucky One at nine, and Dear John, Dear John at 10, and The Choice at 11. And I have Notebook at one, Message in a Bottle at two, a Walk to Remember at three, The Longest Ride at four, Nights in Rodanthe at uh, five, uh, The Lost Song at six, Safe Haven at seven, The Lucky One at eight, Dear John at nine, The Best of Me at 10, and at 11, I have the choice. Yeah. So what's interesting, because I asked our patrons uh, about their ranking, and if you want to be a part of these ranking episodes, make sure to join the Patreon, and it's the best way you can help out the podcast. And I was surprised the how many said they never seen any of them, never seen one, which yeah. that really surprised me. There were a couple uh, that said that, and we were it's one a of them. Type of romance that some people, because you can have a drama filled romance, but people uh -huh. want a happy ending trauma film yeah. moments and these don't always have that yeah i mean that just shows you know there were hallmarkies and so you know we yeah. usually want the happy ending yeah uh that they've never even seen any of them it was just surprising to me uh and so hopefully maybe we've given you some insight into some of these and maybe you give them a chance but uh but uh yeah and scott she says a walk to remember easily the best for me Mm -hmm. and then becky schopner she says the longest ride is in my top 12 favorite rom-coms of all time rom -coms. I'm yeah i'm ridiculously obsessed with that movie which is hilarious because that said it's the only nicholas sparks movie i've ever liked he's just not for me so yeah i mean i guess you could make more of an argument for being rom-com because there is there huh. it, it, it's not as melodramatic as some of the other ones you I know guess like so. i just never interpreted it, it, it as yeah as I, I wouldn't put it on my list of rom-coms i would it'd be more drama but um, it, it doesn't end with like the tra trauma of some of his so i guess I th this is kind of probably it, yeah this is probably how people reacted when we said um the john wayne movie <laughs> with Marina, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the quiet man when we said that was a quiet then people were like excuse me but well, just like what he did like moments of broad comedy <laughs> like yeah. We all have them, Rachel. We all have yeah, them. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, and then uh and Don Cox he says, Yes, I'm a big Nicholas Sparks fan. I've seen all of the movies adapted from his books. I have several favorites, but I liked the longest ride the best. So a lot of longest ride fans. And yeah. so many people had trashed that movie when it came out. Yeah. There was yeah. a point too when that movie came out because the Nicholas Sparks movie started strong and then started to diminish uh, with mm -hmm. each new one that they came out. And yeah. I just think because it was associated with Nicholas Sparks that it got trashed yeah. more harshly than it right. should. Yeah. And I feel bad for Britt Robertson because I think that she's a quality actress and she has got the worst luck in no. projects. Like so many things that I'm sure on paper sounded like really promising and like good, yeah. you know, good projects to be get assigned to and and you know they ended up just not working out i don't know i just think she's had 
just a string of really bad luck but um but she it, it's 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 good mo- i think it's underappreciated i really do totally it totally yeah. is uh so there we go that is uh everything i think we have to say about nicholas sparks so let us know if you are listing what you think, what your ranking would be. We'd love to hear that. I'll put a link to the list of 11 uh, in the description. So if you want to share your ranking, please do. If you want to make a video or a blog post, or whatever, with your ranking, just tag us. We'd love to see that. And uh, Terry, where can people follow you? At Twitter uh, or X, whatever it's called, at Flurry Heaven. Yeah. And yeah, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. And on my YouTube channel, I have uh, I have a review for The Choice. And it's so funny. That's one of those ones that like <laughs> every so often I will get a random comment of being somebody outraged that I didn't like The Choice. And I'm like, on, this is like eight yeah. years ago. What's wrong with you? Because it's on Netflix now. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that why? And people yeah, discover just like, it. And and <laughs> the, I have met people who love this movie. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, oh, okay. Maybe because it's happy. Yeah. It's been happily, I don't know. But I, I have reviews for The Longest Ride. I have just some of these, like I said, there's that 2010 yeah. ranking where you talked about this last song. So anyway, check out my channel and my content for more thoughts on all of these. And uh, and you can follow us at Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us so, so much. And if you are listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group, which is how you can be part of these discussions and give us ideas for rankings and and more. So please take a look at the patron group. And we have merch store where you can get tons of fun hallmark inspired designs so take a look at that and uh, thanks so much everybody and uh, we'll talk to y'all later bye bye